with, as you've noted, with respect to Judge Marchand, I mean, I am, I am like now, you know, I have like a man crush on him. <laughs> he is such a great judge that it's hard to see that the jurors wouldn't have the same impression. I mean, he's just, you just keep on thinking, if you looked in a dictionary for like judicial temperament, that's what you get. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about the Democrats and mainstream liberal media and the sheer overt hypocrisy when it comes to this idea that all of a sudden now you cannot question the criminal justice system, right? You can't question the courts. You can't question the judge, even though Democrats quite literally uh, rioted in the street. Liberals rioted in the streets over an unjust criminal justice system okay these people have went out of their way to try to undermine the sovereignty and integrity of the supreme court because the supreme court has issued ruling after ruling after ruling that they don't like but now all of a sudden when you have a democrat activist judge Mershon in new york city who has donated to democrat and anti-trump initiatives also you have alvin bragg a woke prosecutor who campaigned on going after trump he's gonna take trump down with the help of the former number three guy at the department of justice with a overwhelmingly democrat jury what in my opinion is a clearly and obviously politically motivated witch hunt against the former president of the united states you can't question outcome in fact if you question the outcome you are a dangerous person you're a dangerous person and msnbc says you can't do that right you can't say that it was rigged. You can't do it. They don't like the result, and suddenly, first we went from, a, you know, the election was rigged, now the trial is rigged. Um, I'm reminded of when Hillary Clinton said, you know, when he didn't get an Emmy, he was like, the Emmys are rigged. I mean, it is like, if you lose, it's rigged. If you win, it's fair. Um, and so this is just the same um, leitmotif again and again. Yeah, but see, apparently, when things aren't going in favor of Democrats and the mainstream liberal media, when it comes to Judge Eileen Cannon and her handling of the Jack Smith classified documents case, all of a sudden, no, 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 it's totally fine. It's totally okay to say that it's rigged, that the judge is politically motivated. She's a MAGA activist, okay? And this same propagandist at MSNBC sat quietly as his colleague essentially made that claim and then pushed back on it at all. The curious case of Eileen George, when when people say that the fight is fixed, this is the type of stuff that they are that they're talking right. about. You have a woman here who, Michael, she intentionally appears to be dragging her feet um, and she's proving herself to be to to appear in my uh, opinion. She's proven to be a MAGA activist in a black robe who's given Trump exactly what he wants, and that is unintentional delay. And some people will say, you know what, she's an inexperienced judge that she um, is up in this satellite facility up in Palm Beach County, right. that she's dealing with classified uh, documents, and that requires, that requires special handling. And all of that may be accurate, but at the end of the day, like, she is ignoring settled law. She um, doesn't appear, appear to have an appreciation for the rules of criminal procedure. And I'll give you an example, Michael. Uh, next month, she is holding a day-long hearing to determine whether or not uh, Jack Smith, the special counsel in this case, uh, has been constitutionally appointed. And as Andrew Weissman knows, that, that case is already, that's, that's an argument has already been decided, right? And so, I mean, she, she's a MAGA activist. Um, she has a, a, a MAGA slip underneath this black robe and her slip is showing. That's why, that's what's really hey, happening. <laughs> Andrew Weissman, she a MAGA activist in a black robe with a, with a MAGA slip up under there. So I'm not, I have nothing as catchy <laughs> as that. Um, but let's just take the um, some of the things that she's done, I, just so people understand. She was reversed not once but twice by the Eleventh Circuit for right. um, ruling, um, not you know one time for uh, Trump and one time for the government. All of her rulings have been for Donald Trump. They've always been. And anything critical, unless unless she's really worried about getting um, sort of again reversed on appeal, she's been ruling for the former president um, in connection with an incredibly serious case involving this country's national security. Yeah, so you see that you heard that, okay? Uh, this hack or MSNBC, Andrew Wiseman, when things are going his way. Like in New York, Judge Marchand, oh, he has a man crush on that guy, okay? This is his favorite judge ever, okay? Because he is acting in favor of the liberal media and the Democrats against Trump, right? But 
when Judge Ayeen Cannon is acting in favor of Trump, which is what they say, they, they claim that, again, she, she's biased. Oh, well, you know, this is rigged and this is fixed and uh, she's a MAGA activist, right? This is what they say. This is what they say, okay? You, you see the hypocrisy is right in front of your face. When things are going their way, it's totally fair. When things aren't going their way, it's fixed, <laughs> which is something that he tried to say about Trump and conservatives and Republicans. But it seems to me that MSNBC and Democrats kind of do the same thing. But see, the mainstream liberal media, they're going to continue to have another meltdown over Judge Ayeen Cannon and the fact that she is handling this case in a way that they don't like, a.k.a. she's not trying to rush the case, okay? She's not trying to do sloppy work, which is what was done out in New York in order to get Trump convicted because the point is to have him convicted before the election to sway the outcome of the election. She's not allowing that. The Supreme Court also is not allowing that. Uh, the Georgia Appeals Court is not allowing that. Ain't it funny how that works? Ain't it funny how it works? The, the one trial that these people claim is so fair, right? You can't question it. It is the only one that is allowing fast tracking and denying all of Trump's attempts to have a fair trial. That's the only one that's that's totally fair. Right. And you can't say that's rigged. But all the other ones, though, oh, it's rigged. Right. <laughs> we don't like it. The Supreme Court is rigged. Judge Ayeen Cannon is a MAGA activist. Again, it's just it's, it's hilarious how that works. Right. So hilarious. But anyways, again, they're going to be mad again. They're going to be fuming because Judge Ayeen Cannon has handed Trump another massive W, okay, at the expense of uh, Jack Smith. Because if you guys remember, maybe just a week ago or so, Judge Aileen Cannon denied Jack Smith's attempt to gag Trump, right, to take away the president's freedom of speech, claiming that Trump is putting law enforcement in danger, <laughs> right, because people had questions about uh, whether or not the FBI should have had the ability to use force when uh, raiding Mar-a-Lago, okay, people had questions about that. And then all of a sudden, Jack Smith said, well, law enforcement is in danger. He's putting lives in danger. Let's take away his freedom of speech, right? And Judge Eileen Cannon says, no, 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 you, you can't just try to issue a gag order without giving the president's team enough time to respond, <laughs> right? And again, the mainstream of media had a meltdown over that. And they're going to have another meltdown because Judge Eileen Cannon has agreed to President Trump's request for a hearing on whether Jack Smith's appointment as a special counsel in this classified documents case is legal. And, and here's the kicker, she's allowing third-party scholars to come in and to argue on behalf of the President of the United States to make a case for Trump, to make a case that Jack Smith should be removed, okay? And I want you guys to listen to the anti-Trump activists, right, uh, fume and seethe over uh, Judge Cannon's most recent decision. Take a look. Federal Judge Eileen Cannon just issued a new paperless order inviting certain non-parties to participate in oral arguments before her court on June 21st, 2024, in connection with the Mar-a-Lago document case. These non-parties, she would like to have them argue about whether or not the special counsel, Jack Smith, was unlawfully appointed, and therefore whether Jack Smith uh, and the entire prosecution team should be removed and the case dismissed. Donald Trump filed a motion to dismiss on the basis of the unlawful appointment of special counsel Jack Smith. This is the type of tinfoil style legal arguments that should have no place before a district court. It is as frivolous as can be. It would not even need a hearing date. It should just be rejected out of hand and frankly sanctionable. But not only is Judge Eileen Cannon holding a hearing on this, she's asked for supplemental briefing and now she's invited non-parties to show up in court just like third parties to make oral arguments uh, in formal proceedings before the court, which is essentially entirely unprecedented. She's just making this up as she goes. Here's the paperless order so you can read it for yourself. It says, paperless order granting motions for leave to participate in oral argument as to amicai curi, the representatives designated in the respective filings, will be permitted to appear on behalf of amicai curi and present 
oral argument at the June 21, 2024 hearing on defendant Donald Trump's motion to dismiss the indictment based on the unlawful appointment of special counsel Jack Smith. Yeah, so you see that you heard that, okay? These people are fuming, okay? Because apparently, apparently, when it comes to Alvin Bragg, him taking what is a misdemeanor when it comes to falsifying business records and elevating that to a felony in order to get past the statute of limitations and to revive what was a dead case by saying that, well, he falsified business records in order to commit some federal campaign finance violation, even though the DOJ already basically refuse to go out to Trump for that. Uh, we're going to try to charge him with a felony just so that we can say we, we got him. Um, yeah, that's totally legit, right? He's not just making things up as they go. Um, he's not just pulling things out of his ass, out of thin air. No, no, no. But Judge Ayn Cannon, though, allowing, allowing third parties to come in and to argue for Trump or against Trump, because again, this can benefit both sides, okay? It can benefit Trump. It can be against Trump. Oh, well, she's just making things up, all <laughs> right? This is totally unprecedented. We've never seen this before. Kind of like we never seen what Alvin Bragg did to Trump out in New York before. We've never seen uh, the jury instructions that were given by Judge Merchan that basically guaranteed that Trump would be convicted. Yeah, just like that. Okay, but these people say, oh, that's totally fair, right? Totally fair. N nothing to worry about. Not politically motivated. Again, it's amazing how this works. The hypocrisy is stunning. But again, what these people are really upset about is the fact that this is just going to further delay the classified documents case against Trump because uh, Judge Ayn Cannon has already kind of suspended it indefinitely. And now with these hearings uh, happening, uh, yeah, it's going to delay it even more, right? And basically, this is probably not going to happen before the election. And uh, these people are fuming, okay? Uh, they're fuming so much that over a thousand complaints were filed in a week. OK, to the point where the court uh, no longer is accepting orchestrated complaints about the judge. Right. So they're essentially trying to send hate messages to the judge because she's not moving at the pace that they want her to move at. To me, I think this is hate and bigotry. This to me sounds like xenophobia. OK, it sounds like uh, sexism as well, too, because this is what they told us. OK, this is a immigrant Latino woman that has achieved the American dream by coming over here. And, you know, getting an education and becoming a judge, a distinguished judge, right? But now all of a sudden they're tearing her down because she's not trying to fast track and rush this case against Trump. Again, sounds like hate and bigotry to me. Because, again, this woman was black. If she was black, what do you think the left would be saying, right? If, if the right was attacking her the same way that they're attacking Eileen Cannon, okay? Maybe boohoo whine and cry, hate and bigotry all over the place. So that being said, we got to react to CNN, whose panel is also going to have a meltdown over this, despite the fact that these same people, the same network, would say, oh, no, you can't say that the New York trial was rigged. You can't question the judge, right? Okay, it's dangerous. Now, all of a sudden, again, they want to question uh, Judge Eileen Cannon because she doesn't agree with them. New developments in Donald Trump's classified documents case. Judge Eileen Cannon is expanding an upcoming hearing on the former president's request to declare Jack Smith's appointment as special counsel invalid. Trump's lawyers want Judge Cannon to throw out the case. Trump has attacked, of course, just about every judge he's encountered in his legal battles, except this one, Eileen Cannon, who he happened to appoint. The former president has frequently pra praised her in public, describing her as smart and highly respected. On Tuesday, Judge Cannon ruled a variety of political partisans and constitutional scholars who are not otherwise involved in the case can join the oral arguments in two weeks. Uh, Elliot Williams, how yeah. normal is this? Not normal at <laughs> all. Okay. Uh, there is literally no reason why the judge needs to have uh, additional folks come in at the oral argument. Now, it is a very common practice. The Supreme Court does it all the time to have parties, outside parties, called amicus uh, submitters, right, mm -hmm. to file briefs on the court that lay out their views and the judge can read them and help them in crafting her opinion. But she doesn't need to have this free for all open argument where multiple parties, no matter how great their scholarship has been, um, they don't need to be arguing in court. And this question. Wow. You hear this? You hear this from CNN? Oh, well, <laughs> she doesn't need to have legal scholars, no matter how great their scholarship has been. She, she, she doesn't need to have them come in and argue in, in court in order to help form her opinion, a.k.a. she doesn't need more information, okay? Uh, we shouldn't have an open debate. This is what they're arguing on CNN. This is what they're openly saying. Open debate is bad, right? <laughs>
<laughs> it's bad. It's bad that she's allowing this. Again, this is pathetic. The hypocrisy is stunning. It's in your face. Uh, that they're raising here, this question of was Jack Smith appointed lawfully, it came up in the context of Robert Mueller. Hunter Biden has raised it, and it's lost every single time. So the idea that the question needs to be reopened now and litigated is just sort of silly. Well, I mean, the question I think throughout this case has been whether, you know, the unorthodox way Judge Cannon has yeah. approached this is a result of her her relative inexperience or some sort of bias toward uh, the defendant. And the upshot of all of it has been to delay the case yeah. repeatedly. Uh, there's been, you know, uh, multiple times over the course of this case where she's sort of indulged mo uh, motions from the defense or put things on the calendar, decided to consider things at length or, or just not sped up the case in a way that I think makes watchers of this case, particularly who are not so sympathetic to the defense, very uh, frustrated and exasperated because the end result of it all has been that this is not going to trial anytime soon. And I think that's what people are concerned about. You know, in, in, in polling, when we ask voters, would you like to see these cases reach a verdict before the election? There, resoundingly, large majorities of American voters say yes, they would like to have this information about how these cases are going to be disposed in the legal system before they go to vote, but that is just not going to happen. Well, well no, 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 she's doing her due diligence. That, that's what she's actually doing, okay? Again, I want you guys to understand, these people are upset because the judge is refusing to do sloppy work when it comes to an unprecedented case against a former president. When you talk about trying to prosecute and go out to a former president, that's not something that you should just be fast tracking, right? That's something where you got to make sure you get it right because the implications, the ramifications of what happens if the former president is convicted, um, again, are, are huge, right? Especially when you're talking about before an election. So to me, it makes sense. It, it would make sense to uh, consider the defense's motions, and to make sure everything is done properly before the case goes to trial, which was not done in New York, right? But that's the one they're screaming about. Oh, that was fair. Totally fair. But again, it doesn't matter which case you look at outside of that. Again, if you look at the one in Georgia, the Georgia Appeals Court is uh, hearing the case to have Fonnie Willis dismissed because of the odor of, um, you know, medacity, okay? Because there's conflict of interest, okay? And rightfully so. They should be hearing it. OK, you have the Supreme Court uh, hearing Trump's immunity arguments, which they should hear. OK, and you have Judge Ayeen Cannon hearing arguments to have Jack Smith dismissed. They're considering all of the motions of the defense as they should, because that is his legal right. Again, these people are arguing against legal rights for the president. Oh, well, he, he shouldn't be able to uh, have all these motions to defend himself. Consider it, right? This shouldn't be a thing. The judge should just dismiss him off the cuff. Let's not hear people argue uh, for one side or the other. Let's not have open debate. This is what these people are saying. Because they want it rushed. They just want to get to a conviction before the election. More so than anything. And then these are the same people that claim they care about the rule of law. They care about the integrity of the criminal justice system when they're quite literally arguing for the justice system to fast track cases, to do sloppy work in order to get a guy convicted. That's not law and order. What happened to Trump in New York is not law and order. That's why these people come out and say, Republicans are all of a sudden against law and order. No, 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 no. What happened in New York is the opposite of law and order, right? What happened in New York is a banana republic. That's not law and order. So when people lash out and criticize what happened in New York. They're criticizing the fact that that is not law and order. That's not how the, judici the judicial system should work. What you see happening right now with all these other cases, and again, it's not a coincidence that all of this stuff is happening outside of New York, outside of Democrat-controlled uh, districts. Oh, all of a sudden, oh, these motions by Trump, they're being granted, and he's able to make sure everything is actually fair before the trial begins. Again, it's just amazing how that works, right? It should tell you everything you need to know about the integrity of what happened out there in New York. Well, and Matt Gorman, I mean, I, there's sort of a sense, at least among Republicans I talked to, that maybe this classified documents case was the most dangerous one for Trump, uh, only because of its sort of simplicity in being able to understand what was going on and sort of the general feeling that, well, if I took something classified home from my office, right, that would, that would obviously not be legal. Uh, and yet, 
it's the le probably the least likely of all of them to actually see a verdict. It, it's true, and if you remember back in the primary, it was really it was the only case where a another Republican candidate attacked Trump on. I believe it was Nikki Haley. I know did maybe one other, but I know I remember Nikki Haley doing it vividly. And so you're right. You have like this w weird little conundrum because while the New York case, you know, while it was litigated, etc., it was a little bit more technical. It was tougher, but also a tougher jury pool, tougher judge. You have a little bit more Trump appointed judge maybe a little bit more sympathetic jury pool, but the facts of the case are quite different. And, and, if, and according to many people, maybe a little bit more clear cut. Yeah, yeah. so you've seen that, you heard that, okay? Um, the hypocrisy is, is stunning, right? They're essentially calling uh, Judge Eileen Cannon a DEI judge. They're saying she's inexperienced, she's incompetent, she's MAGA, right? Again, all of these things, if she was black and a Democrat and uh, Republicans made these claims about the judge because the judge wasn't allowing them to get their way. Oh, they'd be crying hate and bigotry, which they have, right? They, they have done that before, okay? When it comes to the woke judge out in, in D.C. that's uh, presiding over the uh, January 6th case, uh, yeah, they, they got upset when Republicans criticized her. They got upset when Republicans criticized Judge Merchan. But now, all of a sudden, it's okay for them to tee off on uh, Eileen Cannon. Again, it's just amazing how that works. So... Um, hey, you know, it seems as if um, <laughs> Judge Cannon here is doing her due diligence. And because she's doing her due diligence, it seems likely that this is not going to happen before uh, the uh, election. And, and who knows? Maybe we could get some surprise happen here with uh, Jack Smith. I'm, I doubt he'll actually get dismissed. But I'm just saying she's dotting all her I's and crossing all her T's. And that is making these liberals lose their minds. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.